Diversity. It's generally regarded as an important quality, and depending on the context, it can mean a lot of different things. So what does diversity mean for Complete the Monument Minecraft maps? Hey everyone, it's your favorite funny Minecrafter here, SpeedyCube64, and in my last video, I showed off a map that does a really good job at providing a diverse experience to the player. Each dungeon of the map is totally new in terms of its aesthetics and gameplay. If I showed you these two areas separately, you probably wouldn't guess that they were from the same map. Sometimes, map makers will use a single aesthetic theme for the whole map, but they can still make their maps diverse by making sure the areas at least play differently. But in this video, I'm going to be covering something that lacks diversity. All my friends are creepers, they explode. Get too close, they might explode your home. Please don't make any sudden moves. The creepers, they might just go boom boom. Lethemir is the 11th map in the Super Hostile map series created by Vex. Unlike his other maps, which either used an open world or a linear style of map design, this map uses a continental style, in which you are on a giant continent and have to travel and explore through expansive, realistic scale biomes. Basically, what this means is that you're going to be running through a bunch of terrain that's for the most part indistinguishable from vanilla, going hundreds of blocks just to get to the next dungeon. Wait, did I just say the next dungeon? I actually meant to say the same dungeon, because some of these are just copied and pasted from each other. The only custom terrain that's even in the map is this group of big ass mountains in the middle with basically nothing on them anyway. But enough rambling about how boring the map is, let's take a look at how speedrunners get it over with as quickly as possible. Play my craft, my diamonds, play my craft, my diamonds, play my craft, my diamonds, eh? play my craft, yeah! The first speedrun of the map was done back in 2015 by Damien, also known as Crazy Troll Team. In this run, he starts off by drowning himself so that he can respawn at the center of the map. There, he gets some basic supplies, climbs up the big ass mountain to get the green wool, digs down next to the one custom designed cave to get some minerals, then runs through the dungeons to get black and red wool. Then, he spends the next 33 minutes just running in a big spiral pattern and digging down to get the rest of the wool blocks even brewing some speed potions by hand just to run a little faster. The final time of the run was 51 minutes and 6 seconds. This record would stay for over 4 years because no one else felt like touching the map. But then that's where I came into the scene. By this point, I had gotten the world records on 7 of the super hostile maps and was on a mission to take the rest as well. So in November of 2019, I did some runs in the hopes of beating Damien's time. The most important way I aimed to save time was by using pearl hangs. If you don't know, this is basically an exploit where you throw an ender pearl in such a way so that it ends up outside your render distance and freezes, allowing you to load the ender pearl later and skip backtracking. In my attempts, I unloaded a pearl above the big ass mountains and used it to avoid backtracking and pillaring up out of the black and red wool dungeon. I also used a pearl hang to cut a corner of the island and avoid pillaring up out of the magenta wool box. Also. I didn't brew any speed potions in this run, mostly because I just didn't feel like it. I ended up getting a time of 44 minutes and 30 seconds, which was good enough for me to move on to other maps. As you can imagine, this record wasn't hotly contested because no one really felt like running the map. But a few months later, I had another reason to push this map further. The Super Hostile Decathlon is a challenge I made up a while back, in which the goal is to beat all of the main Super Hostile maps back to back in as little time as possible. At this point, my best time for the challenge was 5 hours and 34 minutes, and I was looking into ways to bring that time down to under 5 hours. So I ended up finding a way to make this map's time even faster. In Minecraft version 1.7, in order to do a pearl hang, you need to get at least 6 chunks away from the pearl in order to unload it. This means that you can only do pearl hangs in areas where it's possible to get the pearl that far away, often needing to use 2 pearls for every time you do the trick. But in newer versions of the game, this process is a lot more lenient. In fact, you only really need one chunk of distance in between you and the pearl for it to unload. So by converting the map to version 1.16, I was able to use pearl hangs to skip pillaring up every single time I dug down. This new optimization allowed me to lower the time by over 6 minutes, bringing it down to sub 38. 
and with these new strategies, I was able to complete the Super Hostile Decathlon Challenge in under 5 hours, and so the speedrun was left to collect dust once again. You might have noticed that during this time period, a much more important phenomenon was happening with regards to Minecraft speedrunning. The release of version 1.16 combined with a certain green guy's videos caused Minecraft speedrunning to absolutely explode in popularity, and during the following year, the time would be improved from over 20 minutes all the way down to under 10. But what does that have to do with Lethemir? Well, since the map is so close to an ordinary vanilla world, it was speculated that certain strategies used in speedrunning the base game might help with speedrunning this map as well. On October 16th, 2021, Japonk posted a video of himself essentially doing a vanilla 1.16 speedrun on the left area map. Japonk started by getting some basic supplies and running to a nearby lava pool where he could enter the nether. Once there, he used an ender pearl that he got earlier to get to a nearby stables bastion, where he then used the triple chest ramparts to trade with piglins and get pearls. Then, he got blaze rods from a fortress and made another portal that took him directly to the stronghold. Once in the end, all Japonk had to do was wait for the dragon to perch, and in about a minute, it did just that, allowing him to reach the game's credits in 13 minutes and 20 seconds. But what could killing the ender dragon possibly have to do with collecting the wool from all of the dungeons? You see, upon defeating the boss, a gateway spawns that takes you to the outer end islands, which allows you to explore end cities. From there, you could obtain the elytra, which, when used in combination with firework rockets, allows you to literally fly. You can probably see where I'm going with this. But was this increased speed in collecting walls really worth this massive detour required to obtain the elytra in the first place? Well, in the following week, I decided to come back to the map one more time and put that to the test. You wouldn't believe this route was faster, but the final time of the run was 34 minutes and 6 seconds, a near 4 minute improvement over the previous route. But hold on a second, this route obviously involves entering the nether and the stronghold and the end, and there is a rule of the map telling the player not to go out of bounds and enter any naturally generated terrain. So the question remains, is this run valid? To answer that question, I held a poll asking other CTM speedrunners whether runs that go out of bounds should be considered valid. And almost to my surprise, the majority of respondents agreed to allow going out of bounds, as runs of the map would just be too boring without it. I guess that just shows that sometimes it's better to take risks and go ahead and do something without necessarily asking for approval first. With this community decision, my 34 minute speedrun became the official world record for the map. And that record still stands today. But the story doesn't end just yet. 
Mob so icy, wonder why they kill me. I'm just mining in water, I just fell in a hole. Now I'm crying. A few months later, Quiblington would improve on Japonk's initial demonstration by beating the dragon in 8 minutes and 34 seconds. This was a 5 minute improvement in the map's early game alone. So how did they do it? Well, aside from having better execution in general, they found two major improvements to the route. The first of these improvements involved hanging a pearl on the way to the bastion to cut down on the distance spent traveling to the fortress later. They were able to cut out the pearl throw on the way to the bastion by running through some caves instead. Lastly, Quiblington used a new end fight strategy called the Zero Cycle, which involves pillaring up to kill the dragon before it even reaches its first node. This allows the dragon fight to take less than a minute every single time. With that improvement alone, this map can surely be brought to sub 30. But other strategies do exist for the later section of the run as well. First of all, there's a glitch that can be abused when entering the end. By using a piston and a staircase, it's possible to preserve your overworld coordinates into the end which puts you closer to an end city. And on top of that, there's the fact that my record was clearly my first time using an elytra in a speedrun. <laughs> Wait till you see the f <laughs> No 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 <laughs> So as I said earlier, sub 30 is definitely possible on this map, but I'm going to encourage you all to strive for a better goal. I want to see this boring map pushed to its absolute limit. That's right, the first person to get sub 25 on this map will get a hefty reward of $10, and the first person to get sub 20 will get double that. That's a potential $30 for anyone who's willing to grind the map hard enough. More information on the conditions of this bounty will be in the description below. So what are you waiting for? Go download the map and start grinding today. To summarize the story, back in 2012, Vex made a massive blunder of a map that was so boring that few people even wanted to touch it. Over many years, CTM speedrunners eventually found ways to continually lower the amount of time it takes to beat the map. This made it slightly more interesting in the process, even if some of those methods were a little cheaty. The current world record sits at 34 minutes, but the map can definitely be pushed to sub 25 and maybe even sub 20. Since I'd like to see this happen someday, I've decided to put some bounties on these 5 minute barriers, so you could become a part of this map's history and make yourself some cash at the same time. Anyway, Vex abandoned the continental style in his next few maps, so we never had to worry about another boring super hostile map again. Or so we thought. That's about it for this video. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay speedy. Peace.